Hello, celebrity gossip enthusiasts. I'm Us Weekly's entertainment director, Travis Cronin, and you're tuned into Us Weekly's Hot Hollywood Podcast. The show where we break down all of the hottest celebrity stories, you know, just because we like to talk about it and it's really, really fun. Well, I couldn't do this alone, um, but I'm a little more alone this week because Gwen Flamberg, as a surprise to no one who listens to the podcast, is in Monaco or Monte Carlo in the south of France and cannot join us, but have fun, Gwen. Sarah Huron, are you um, in the south of France or any tropical location joining us today? Um, the tropical island of Hoboken, New Jersey, um, which is beautiful this island. time of year. Yes, it's great. Um, I feel like it hailed yesterday, which was awesome. Um, but I, you know, no jealousy here. Just want Gwen to have a lovely time. We always support a vacation. I have quite a few things in the work myself. So <laughs> you're lucky to have me while you do. <laughs> Great. We will take it. And uh, bon voyage, Gwen. If I knew to say see you later in French, I would say that. Au revoir. Au revoir. There's a oh, parfait. Bonjour parfait. La <laughs> That's Emily wow. Ferris. See, I only know things from the McDonald's menu, so I only say parfait. Okay. Or perfect, yes. Or, you know, your little voulez vous coucher avec moi, c'est bois, whatever, Lady Marmalade, I'm sure you can of that. Of course, yes. I quote Christina Aguilera, Pink, and Maya, and Missy Elliott, and Lil' Kim. Well, we have a lot of, Sarah, I really like the celebrity news this week, because it's very, like, salacious, gossipy news. Um, and it's just, like, all so messy and fun. But before we do that, let us get into our woes of the week. These are the stories that made, well, Sarah and I grab our proverbial pearls and clutch them. And I will say, Sarah, I changed my woe at the last minute. I know that's going to make you go woe. But please tell me, Sarah, what is your woe of the week? Oh, my God. You changed your woe. Interesting. Okay. Um, My woe was a continuation on my woe last week, which was the Kelsey like Ballerini of it all. Yes. Um, as anyone who listens knows, she released this iconic six-track EP, kind of exposing the details of her divorce from Morgan Evans and nothing like too like salacious, but just like her side of the story of we were been checked out in this relationship for a long time. We were in couples therapy. Like I was putting an effort, you weren't putting an effort. And then you put out a song saying you were blindsided and I'm pissed about that. So since then, there's been a few developments. She went on Call Her Daddy, which is always a bold choice um, and a platform for people to spill some tea. And she kind of said she only wanted to do one interview about this EP and chose Alex Cooper. I don't know why. I don't know why she shouldn't call me, but whatever. I know. Seriously, your biggest fan, Sarah Huron, would have been so supportive of like, you. I have your back, girl. Um, and in the interview, if you listen to the whole thing, there was definitely like a few like clicky parts and some words used. She said, you know, she did feel used when Morgan Evans did release his song over for you, which was within weeks of them fi her filing for divorce. And it's, it's a very emotional song. He's like emotional at the piano at a concert. And obviously he can't control. It. It's going to go like go viral on TikTok, but it definitely sets up her to be the villain in the story that she randomly just pulled out the rug from under him. And she also said in her songs and confirmed, you know, he got half the house that I paid for. And people Shady. have always sort of speculated in our relationship, she was kind of on the up and up 22 when they met. He was like 30 something. His career hadn't really been taking off. Like, was this, you know, to ride her coattails? And she was like, I genuinely don't believe he did during our marriage. But the fact that his first move post split was a song about me, shady. So she said a few things, but overall was like definitely holding back and pretty respectful, um, was more trying to talk about how like she met this guy at 22, 23. She was inexperienced about life in relationships and sex, love, has trauma from her parents' divorce. And then, you know, woke up one day at 29 and was like, this is crazy. I've been putting in all this effort and this relationship, it just ain't it. And they filed for divorce after several different separations. So then Morgan Evans finally responded. And I don't like his statement at all. It's a little bit of gaslighting if you ask me. And he said, it's really sad for me to see this person who I spent so much of my life with and loved with all my heart saying things that aren't reality and leave out what really happened. She knows I'm not the type of guy to speak on these things publicly. If this is what she needs to heal, I hope it helps. All I ask is that if you're on my pages, please don't be mean. Don't be mean to Kelsey. Don't be mean to each other. Life's too short. I... I'm holding in vomit because of how passive aggressive and gaslit he, I mean, I could saute, you know, a steak on that light. It is like really, really sort of like the worst parts of being mean and shady to someone you broke up with. I mean, it's not reality. It's her reality. Uh, also, I believe uh, it's probably the reality, like whatever, because 
and for a lot of reasons, she had plenty of examples and her songs are like, remember that fight we got into here when I slept on the couch and then we showed up and we have puppy eyes on the red carpet. Like it's, it's her reality. And if he wants to share in his reality was this, she's a villain and bli like blindsided me and left me and I'm heartbroken. So you started it first of all. And second of all, it's just so dumb to be like, don't be mean. Like you're perpetuating the, like you're not taking the high road here by saying, don't be mean. It's actually quite the opposite. And then in the comments, she's got some stands and a lot of them are like defending her. And then people were like, funny how my comment keeps getting deleted, but the comments supporting you are at the top. So like now there's like drama in his own comments of the don't be mean post. Like, it's ridiculous. And he like reshared it on his Instagram story, on Twitter. And it's like, if sometimes silence is your best friend, yeah. or even if you want to say some version of this, like don't leave the comments open for then people to fight. I don't know. It's just, it's too much. And now page six is saying that she had an affair in 2019 with the chain smoker who dated Selena Wait. Gomez, but she's also, what she has not commented on and we have not confirmed, but she did say that they like had lengthy periods of separation so who knows what really went down, but they did that song together. Yes, this feeling. And we do know a chain smoker can sink sink his teeth into a pop star. Oh, um, we sure do. They can sink their teeth into a lot of things. Right. So I don't know. She, there's pretty much little she can do or say that's going to make me ever not be on her side. And that's how I feel. And Morgan Evans, go away. Go away. I also feel like you get to sort of choose one. You either combat in song or in statement, yes. and you can't really do the two. You know, you either release another Especially song. Especially when with you started lyrics. it. Like you yeah, started it with your breakup song within weeks of her filing for divorce. Well, it's like Olivia Rodrigo driver's license. You know, they yes. went back and forth with songs. Enter Sabrina Carpenter with like a little like less good like intro to Honestly, that. Honestly, I think we've been sleeping on Sabrina Carpenter because I went back and listened to that album. And like, obviously, Olivia Rodrigo is the queen, but like, it's actually kind of good. I don't dislike Sabrina Carpenter. I just thought that her song and all of that was sort yeah, of Yeah, that the song wasn't good, but that nonsense song is a bop. Oh, I love nonsense. Yeah. And and, yeah. and there's another one she has that's like upbeat that I really like. Fast liked. times and fast life or whatever. No. no. Oh. No. Um, but no, I agree with you. They went back and forth in song. All three of them showed more maturity at 20 in their songwriting <laughs> than Morgan Evans did with the statement. Um, which speaking of, like, did you see Joshua Bassett is now like a born again Christian and like promoting all this like church stuff after like potentially hinting that he was queer and now he's very religious and like posting Bible verses. Like it's all quite confusing what's happening there. Oh, I've seen that story before. And usually the Didn't pendulum like the swings. So usually the pendulum swings back. And I mean, I hope not. he's living his truth. Me too. Me too. Good luck with that. Okay. Good luck, messy songwriters. Keep it coming. <laughs> Good luck, messy songwriters. Please don't release statements. <laughs> well, my woe of the week was going to be her little, little BOGO, and we don't have to spend too much time on the news topic that I've moved down. It was going to be Kendall Jenner and Bad oh. Bunny dating. They have been spat, spotted out twice together, just so you're all aware, with the new hot couples. Um, they were spotted at the same Los Angeles restaurant on a double date with Haley and Justin B. Bieber. They obviously have some mutual friends in that Haley Biebs. You know, Kendall Jenner knows every single celebrity just somehow. She's invited to every party. Well, because she's a famous supermodel. But that is not my woe of the week, Sarah Huron. My woe of the week goes to, you know, titles first, the Countess Luann oh. Deceps. Um, at her show in New York City, she uh, was thrown up on by a fan during her cabaret. She was walking around doing her thing as Sarah and I have both been. It's a very fun show. And, and everyone uh, is blacked out and, at yes. Feinstein's and below or or insert your version Feinstein of that in 54. City here. Yeah, for 54. <laughs> It, it, everyone is so libation heavy. Yes. Um, it's a lot of like like girlfriends, mom's night out, groups of gays. That's actually pretty much all it is. But yeah. all of them are tanked. And someone threw up on the count to Luann Deceps. And I was telling my fiance and I was like, and yes, he was gay. Like, <laughs> so she, you know, got vomited on at her show. And I just, that definitely made me go, whoa, me God too. bless it. It is part of funny. Me is like, how has this not happened before? Another part of me is like, thank God it wasn't me. <laughs> Um, the, the story is allegedly the person was laughing so hard. So the Countess must have really crushed a punchline there um, during the Q&A. And then Dorinda was there and apparently she like got escorted out because she was so drunk, but she denied that. But we, I think we all know that's true. Um, we but all it's know giving, that's true. It's giving like, bravo, figure out these Roni legacy negotiations because this is an episode I would have thoroughly enjoyed to watch on my television. I feel like as soon as Legacy got canceled, there were all those paparazzi shoots. They all tried them. to team up and it's working. 
and it's working. I want to tune into the show and I miss it. Me too. Uh, we'll come back. Well, let us get into the drama. I am excited to talk about this and see if I, I have read this a few times and try to figure it out because it's messy. There's a lot going on. I am talking about Brooklyn Beckham's wedding drama um, to Nicola Pets. Now they Pelts. They got married in front of 500 guests at her father's oceanfront estate in Palm Beach, as one does when your dad is super rich. Uh, well, both of your dads are super super rich. Of course, Brooklyn Beckham's parents are Victoria and David Beckham, and uh, Nicola's are billionaire business people. And now Nicola and Brooklyn are trying to squash rumors of a feud between them about the wedding dress that she uh, wore. But now more wedding drama has continued to unfold um, with their wedding planners. It has accumulated in two lawsuits. Now, Brooklyn Beckham's new stepfather, um, investor Nelson Peltz, um, and Nicola and these two, these two wedding planners who run the Miami-based event planning Plan design events um, accused the the Nicola's dad stepdad. Yeah, he accused, filed the he filed it first. He right? filed it first. Said that they didn't refund their hundred fifty nine thousand dollar deposit, and then these two wedding planners filed a countersuit um, for being in breach of contract, calling him quote a billionaire bully and claiming the family put him through wedding planning hell. Now, according to the dad's uh, lawsuit, he says six people for the wedding, their first wedding planner fell through. Page six reported that he was overwhelmed and had overcommitted to the issues and said the family was a disaster. And he was saying the new uh, planners couldn't handle the guest list and bowed out after nine days. It also suggested that one of the wedding planners had a drinking problem, right. citing a text that she sent to Nicola at one point saying, now I'm going for a tequila. My head is about to explode. To which Nicola responded, yes, queen. Just one of my favorite parts about this whole endeavor. Um, the unknowingly supporting possible alcohol alcoholism or just like shaming somebody you needed tequila after a day of work is what it's sounds like um and then a lot of the disputes are about the celebrity packed guest list so the wedding planners claim that nicola was constantly changing the list and they said that they after mistakenly told her that f1 driver and former nicole share singer boyfriend lewis hamilton was attending the wedding but then got an angry text from her said lewis hamilton did not rcp so explain why his name's on the guest list please and then an all tack all, all text she says um, when she found out Ron DeSantis might be attending, the governor of Florida, she says, DeSantis must be, all caps, off the gas list, please confirm. Okay. Now, Brooklyn, Pe Brooklyn Beckham really isn't involved in this at all. He clearly wasn't involved in the planning a lot. And uh, they said that in that in the lawsuit, <laughs> she said, quote, I do not trust Brooklyn with this. You should be asking um, an assistant. He has no idea and is guessing. And another element on this was the Wendy's food truck. That was sort of the one thing that Brooklyn Beckham wanted at their wedding. Uh, you know, it sounds like a very cool, like, guy thing to want at the wedding. And Nicola's parents, like, I don't know, own a bunch of Wendy's, invested in Wendy's. They've got a big tie, so it's not a hard one to get. And then they sent, like, all of these single or double burger burgers, lettuce instead of a bun, and meat for the girls, which we know means Victoria Beckham. And... I don't know. Uh, I what I really do want to know is, did the Spice Girls get lettuce burgers from Wendy's? And I haven't right. gotten the answer to that question. Or yet. a frosty? No. Listen. I mean, I think this is pretty clear that the this was a very stressful wedding to plan. The fact that they lost their wedding planner within weeks of the wedding, you know, being there, and then hired five hundred person wedding. Right. The, it was very star studded. Clearly, the guest list was a point of contention between you know the couple didn't even know who was invited. Um, maybe there was you know moms sneaking on their friends and not telling everyone. Absolutely. Um, so they obviously hired these two people who the Peltz Beckham family felt was incompetent. So they fired them, but they still cashed the check. So they want the money back. But these people are saying, oh, the nine days or whatever we worked were the worst nine days of our lives and we deserve the funds. <laughs> so it's very messy. My favorite part 
I think this is crazy. First of all, like it's very interesting. And I like, I love when like lawsuits include text messages. Cause even though like too. they don't really mean anything, it's fun to see like how Nicola Peltz texts. You know what I mean? Like you learn yes, so queen. much about people. <laughs> yes, queen. And she said both Claudia, which is her mom and Nicola had insisted that Victoria Beckham could not know about any internal mistakes regarding the ongoing planning of her son's wedding, including any errors with the guest list. So that's what the wedding planners are saying. So they're saying that there was a whole added pressure of we have to keep posh spice out of the wedding planning, which I think adds fuel to the fire of the drama, alleged drama between Nicola and Victoria that they've tried to deny, but she yeah. didn't wear a Victoria Beckham dress. And it, it kind of just comes up like every couple months, there's like little nuggets of them denying this feud. It's like, why are you denying this feud so bad that we don't really even know happens? Like, it's just very bizarre. And I think they were worried about, you know, Victoria seeing any, any flaws because maybe she feels all this pressure to be marrying into this family, even though she's got a lot of money on herself. So it's definitely a messy one. I mean, I have a detail oriented stepmother and I am planning a wedding, but like she's not, she doesn't own her own fashion line and she doesn't like have, you know, this history of interior decor. If Victoria Beckham was like my future and mother-in-law and I didn't wear her dress and thus couldn't involve her in any of the planning, like that definitely drives a wedge. And Victoria Beckham's going to find a flaw. I'm sorry. She's like actually as flaws. She's literally held in a smile for 45 years to stop flaws. Yeah. This is a losing battle. But I'm excited to see how this plays out in court. I hope we get more text messages between them. Me too. The hecticness really calms me in my life. Well, let's move on to some happier news. Sarah, Rebel Wilson is engaged. And I, uh, she's our cover star, cover girl alert on the new issue of Us Weekly on Stands Now. We've worked really hard on it, guys. Pick it up. Um, it's right there by the checkout. Um, and... So they got they got engaged at Disneyland. They had a Disney proposal. They had really cute like matching sweatshirts. Um, it was just like, a really adorable scene. And of course, they you know now have a family. Rebel Wilson, when she met Ramona, her soon to be wife, um, had had a surrogate pregnant. So now they have a baby on the way. And a source tells us that Rebel has everything she wants. She's in love. She's a mother. She's wildly happy. And Ramona takes amazing care of Rebel. She cares about her so much and wants the best for her and is very, very attentive. Uh, the source also says that they love to go to Disneyland together. Um, and before the baby, they love to travel. But right now, they're more stay-at-home moms. But Rebel has a lot of exciting work coming up. She is going to be in movies and directing some movies. Um, and they also have a dating app that they're working together called Fluid that I guess is for both sexualities that they're launching for people to find love like them and i just think that's very cute yeah that's lovely i mean i wish nothing but the best for rebel wilson my only real comment is like if anyone tried to propose to me at disney world i would say no i thought i was gonna get a proposal at disney once and i was like horrified for a second I was yeah like, like, it ain't for me here. but it i'm happy it's for me. you rebel and ramona yeah, and as I, I did, a, a source did tell us that they're probably not going to have a Disney wedding, that they just That's had a good. Disney engagement. Also, if you, there was like this special on Disney Plus, when you have a Disney wedding, you either have to get married at like 3 a.m. or midnight because of the part, you can't close down the park. So like if you want your flower girl to be like so tired <laughs> and your family to hate you because you're up at 4 a.m., like that's sort of the only way to have a Disney wedding. But I just, I, I see, I feel like everyone sees a lot of themselves in rebel because she struggled with her weight she's dated all these guys that were bad for her found love later in life after trying to have a baby on her own i just like it's a very not the same as jennifer aniston but like rebel wilson does have that you know like thing where she couldn't find love and everybody who like had trouble finding love sees themselves in rebel so i'm really happy for her just because she's sort of been that person like in the country right now and that she's a gay woman i just think it's really cool totally you're like you're like i don't see myself in rebel but go no, off I, everybody <laughs> but i like co-sign like i'm, I'm for all of that obviously Good. yeah and i love the perfect I I do too. I do too. I even like the Chris Hemsworth like romantic comedy movie with her. Oh, I didn't see that. Oh, it's really cute. You should watch it. Is that um, the one with um Liam Hemsworth too? Yes, Liam Hemsworth, not Chris Hemsworth. Okay, he plays Liam the other Hemsworth. guy. Sorry to this Hemsworth brother. And the one that like caused all the the stir because the clip that came out with Miley being oh no that was an Avengers movie. No, it was Miley, an Avengers Miley movie. Miley went like in Liam's behalf because he was like sick 
or something. It was like during, it yes. came out during their like two month marriage. It was nine months. And Priyanka Chopra is also in it, right? And that was like, oh, yes. Jonas, whatever. Like I, my naily heart of Miley and Nick <laughs> always holding out hope thinks it about does. it that way. That's what I think about with that movie, but I'm sure it's great actually on screen. <laughs> in my head, that's what happened. And I absolutely believe you co-sign that. That is what we're going to uh, speculate happened. Well, Sarah, what's that sound? Oh, it's a foreclosure in Housewives World. And you already know whose house is foreclosing. It is Kim Zolciak. Now, I have wondered for decades now how Kim Zolciak has so many hundreds of thousands of dollars. There's not like a huge business empire you can point to. There's no oh, big you don't, pop you don't buy cashmere skin? I do, not, I do not buy cashmere skin. I do not believe a lot of people do. There's no more Big Papa bankrolling her. She's no longer the sugar baby. She's sort of more in a partnership relationship with a guy who doesn't play football anymore. So I didn't understand where this money is coming from. And the bank agrees, Sarah. So um, Kim and Croy's Alpharetta Mansion, which is right outside of Atlanta, um, has been foreclosed after they both defaulted on a $1.65 million loan they took out on the property on in October 2012. Now, according to a notice shared last week by Fulton County, Traced Bank, not Trust, Traced Bank plans to auction the property off on March 7th in front of the Fulton County Courthouse. We will be there reporting live. Um, an attorney listed on the foreclosure did not um, respond to us yet, but a source tells us that she is telling everyone this is a misunderstanding. It is being sorted out. She is not moving, they said. And then right after she uploaded a picture of her huge chandelier in the house. It's all very strange. What are your thoughts on this foreclosure? I mean, the fact it's everything is so classic here. I think we are amongst a lot of people wondering how Kim Zolciak Bierman and Croy Bierman were keeping up appearances after, especially after Don't Be Tardy was canceled. I mean, granted, she was in a popular right. Atlanta housewife. Then she got a spinoff that ran for like six, seven, eight seasons, yeah. but has not been on the air for a while. And She's got a lot of kids. There's a lot of kids spending money. There's six kids spending money the way they were and probably still are without your consistent TV check probably catches up to you quite quickly. You can only it's do so many. It's giving me spelling vibes. It's, it's, gonna, giving... it's very Tory. I know that trust bank from Tory's finances as well. <laughs> um, it's it's definitely, trust you know, will come after you. <laughs> how many Instagram ads can one do to, you know, try to keep up with a $1.6 million loan on your home? And it's also very Kim Zolciak to be denying that there's any truth to this. They're saying it's, you know, old or whatever. I think this is one of the things where, you know, Mar come March 7th, they'll either be an auction or there won't. So we will find out. I would be shocked shocked if there was any truth to their how them this not being true just based on my lawyer knowledge this feels right. pretty legit thank you oh thank you paralegal sarah huron because oh it does feel a little bit fishy and um, everyone I is just up on instagram commenting don't be tardy for the payment and it's sending me <laughs> Oh, that's just really smart. That is really, really smart. She was tardy for the payment. <clears throat> um, I mean, will Nene Leakes be auctioning off? Uh, the, will, she, will she be there for the bidding war at the house? Because that would be some lovely passive aggression if Nene Leakes or anyone that hates Kim Zolciak would buy this house. <clears throat> um, side note from Kim Zolciak coming into her office a bunch of times. I do. I always think about this. She's terrified of elevators and won't take an elevator. So she has her publicist we had to walk her like in like a storage elevator and walk her back and it was this really strange way and he was like we've been in vegas once and we've walked up 40 flights of stairs because kim won't get in an elevator right and similar to why tori spelling doesn't really fly yeah a weird little like there's there's there. there is there is you know maybe you should get your training in psychology and be like maybe their failure to look at their payments is the same terror they feel on these things who knows we will sarah will get certified and come back to us later with an expert opinion now for our final story i want to set the truth straight for everyone sarah because it's a little confusing about megan fox and machine gun kelly now at Super Bowl, I saw them. They looked <laughs> unhappy with each other. Um, Megan Fox completely deactivated her Instagram last week after hinting at a potential 
cheating breakup between her and God and Mar- Machine Gun Kelly's 32 years old already. Where does the time go? So she reactivated her type and shared a post saying that there was no cheating involved in the relationship by saying there was no 30 par- third party interference in this relationship of any kind. You need to let this story die and leave all these innocent people alone. I mean, her first post writing the Beyonce lyric, you can taste dishonesty all over your breath, and then saying that. We also had sources at the time confirming to us that there was a little bit of a DMs issue, not with Sophie the guitarist, but there was. And her backtracking this, then they're photographed, you know, crying outside of a counselor's. What 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 do you think is going to be the end result? What is even happening now between these two? I mean, it's annoying for Megan Fox to start light the fire, start the speculation with her Instagram posts and then be mad at people for speculating. So that's ridiculous. First of all, like you're upset yes. about the speculation that you started. So maybe, you know, be a little think before you Graham next time, homegirl. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not even was just a cryptic quote, like she unfollowed him, deleted pictures. Like it was a lot of reason for speculation. Um, I do feel bad that guitarist Sophie did get dragged into this. Apparently she's been in a long-term relationship um, and did not, you know, do anything inappropriate. So that sucks. But Megan also started that rumor by responding to a comment saying, who said, I bet he got with Sophie. And she responded, what if I got with Sophie? That dragged us into saying, who who the hell is Sophie? So if you didn't do that, we also wouldn't need you or Sophie or anyone denying anything. So this is all your fault, Megan. Um, Yeah. (laughs) And um, I think they're probably trying to make it work. I think the dust will settle. I think they'll still be together for a little while longer. And similar to J-Rod back in the day when um, A-Rod got caught DMing with Southern Charm reality stars, they stuck together for a few more months until finally the split statement came out. And I think they sometimes people do that because they maybe are really working on it, but also because they don't want it to be associated, the breakup to be associated with said scandal, said controversy. So I'm sure Mm. it's really fun over at that house right now. Oh, it is up and down and all over the place and messy. I agree. I think that this is a little bit too tumultuous to have longevity. Um, a source previously told us that they're looking at an Italian wedding on a, letty, a wedding in Italy. So I'm pretty sure they've already started to plan that. I'm sure that adds another layer. Well, good Before luck we go, can we talk about Selena Gomez's eyebrows? Yes. Well, I was actually going to give everyone an update on Alec Baldwin before we go oh, to, okay. because there's a little update in the case. It's not really a big update, but we've talked about this almost every week. So I feel like we should really be seeing it through. Um, Alec Baldwin seen dropping off his kids, paparazzi photos. Great. He's fine. Living his life. Um, but there was a charge dropped against him. Um, so now the film's armor armorer, of course, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, who was in charge of the weapons, um, had a gun enhancement charge that Alec Baldwin also had, and those were dropped. But when he goes to uh, court, he will still face the involuntary manslaughter charge. But there was that charge dropped, which I'm not quite sure what it means. I know it's not as bad as involuntary manslaughter. So he's still looking at, you know, a lot of bad time. Um, please, All right, Sarah, tell me about the legend Gomez's eyebrows. Okay, so, you know... If this would have been Gwen Woes of the Weeks, so this is a nice tribute to her. Exactly. I did a little stylish writing today, which is always, you know, some of my oh, strengths. Oh, nice. So, um, Kylie Jenner posted... Stunned. Yes, the stuns on Met Gala carpet, everyone ever. Um, <laughs> Kylie Jenner was on Instagram, maybe you've heard of her, and she posted... This was an accident, question mark, question mark, question mark, with like a selfie of herself. And the writing was like over her eyebrows. Then she posted a zoomed in screenshot of a FaceTime with Haley Bieber. of, And it was like their eyebrows. And people were like, that's weird. Because literally three hours ago on TikTok, Selena Gomez, who's been having some interesting social media behavior, might I just I say. I agree. Um, was on TikTok posting a video how she wishes she looked like Bella Hadid, who like yeah. side note, obviously dated The weekend for a long time. Selena dated The weekend for a long time. That's a whole other thing to unpack. But she posted, I wish I looked like Bella Hadid. She's so pretty. But I um, laminated my eyebrows too much. Yeah. So Selena that's... just posted saying like she f***ed up her eyebrows, basically. Lamination is when you like, like, like a permanent them. tattoo. You uh, oh, these go to up. They go up. So you get like a feathery brow that sticks up. It's very like 2020 eyebrow. Got it. So Selena posted that she did too much of that to her eyebrows. And then 
at the same time, Kylie had these Instagram stories that like oddly focused on eyebrows and Haley Bieber was involved. And obviously we know Haley is married to Justin who dated Selena forever. So I was t- TikToker, you know, put two and two together and said, this is messed up. They're bullying her. And Kylie responded, this is reaching. No shades toward, no shade towards Selena ever. And I didn't see her eyebrow post. That's so much a point. You guys are making something out of nothing. This is silly. And Selena agreed. She said, agreed at Kylie Jenner. It's all unnecessary. I'm a fan of Kylie. So, I mean, lovely to take the high road here, but this is weird. Like it's a little bit of an asterisk and this just happens all the time. I feel like there's always these fan accounts making these videos, like connecting Haley Bieber and Selena Gomez's posts. And even though I know like last year they took that picture together and allegedly there's no beef, Selena comments on a lot of them and she'll either be like sad emoji or like everyone be kind. Like, I just feel like it's fascinating to see what she comments on and like what Haley denies, what Kylie denies. Like this happens every couple months on TikTok. And I don't know how much of it is truth. Like what is actually shade? What is coincidence? Probably a combo of both. But it's right. crazy that like these A-listers are also interacting with these TikToks being like, this is a reach. Like it's fascinating to me. It's also her social media recently has been a little strange. We also yeah. haven't seen her with uh, Chain Smokers Drew in uh, a few weeks now. But to uh, the the weekend dated Bella Hadid for maybe a year and a half, two years before he got with Selena Gomez. And then got back wrote, with Bella. Got back with Bella. He wrote a breakup album about Selena Gomez, not much about Bella Hadid. It was very clear that the weekend was so into Selena Gomez. And I mean, when you're going to compare your eyebrows to somebody, like maybe it isn't like the ex of your ex. I just, right. it's, and with the same with the Haley Bieber that she keeps commenting on, I don't know. I, I fell in love with Selena after watching her documentary and I felt like she was very real. But this social media activity, like I, she's a smart woman. She knows how she's connected to these people. And it just feels a little strange. Like she's trying to stir it up and then pretend like she has nothing to do with it. Sorry, Lisa. Yeah. Rana. It's very sketchy. And I just love that it like TikTok is such an equal opportunity platform that Selena Gomez, Hailey Bieber, Kylie Jenner, they all go on and they get served a video about themselves and they (laughs) respond like in what world, like on Instagram, like you don't see interactions as much with like fan accounts maybe, but these are just like random people who don't have followers making these videos, like speculating. And then it ends up on their for you page and they respond and then comments by celebs on it. And it's just, it's a crazy world we're living in. It is. It is. Well, thank you for that woe of the week from Glenn Flamberg from the south of France. Um, And thank you to Sarah and the ghost of Gwen in the south of France for helping me spill all of this piping hot celebrity this week. Again, this is Travis Cronin's weekly hot Hollywood podcast with your weekly peek into the glamour, glitter, fashion, and fame of your favorite celebrities. Because after all, Sarah, you know what they are. They're They're just just like like us. Us. Yes, they are with more money on access. We will be back next week with a new episode. Thank you guys so much for listening and we'll see you then. Bye. Bye.